Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? When, when evildoers came upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war rise against me, in spite of this, I shall be confident. One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. For in all the days of trouble, he will conceal me in his tabernacle, in the secret place of his tent, he will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock. And now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice and be gracious to me and answer me. When, I, when you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, O Lord, I shall seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. O God of my salvation, for my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a level path because of my foes. Do not deliver me over to the desires of my adversaries. False witnesses have risen against me and such as breathe out violence. I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. Psalm 27. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. If I missed anyone, welcome everyone on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Welcome to all four social medias. Wherever you're watching from, welcome everyone. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Today, in this overcast day in California, it's so funny. It doesn't matter if it's overcast because we know the sun is still shining. Even if, the, even if our lives seem cloudy, we always know. The light of the Lord is always shining. And me, the Lord gave me back in year number one, OG ones probably remember this. The Lord gave me a lesson in the clouds one day. It was called a lesson in the clouds where God said, I'm like the sun. Sometimes your, sometimes your life is cloudy, but the sun didn't go out. You just have clouds, but the sun is still shining. So if you're going through a, a cloudy situation in your life right now, God didn't go anywhere. He's still shining. His light is still shining. His protection is still over us. He's still, he's still loving us. He's still covering us. We just see clouds right now. We're just going through a storm right now. But all storms have to end at some point. Weeping may endure for night, but joy comes in the morning. The, the, the sun doesn't go anywhere behind clouds, and God doesn't go anywhere. When we're in trouble, we're seeking challenges. We feel like we're under, out of control. We feel attacked. We feel overwhelmed. God didn't go anywhere. We get all stressed out like God went somewhere. God didn't go anywhere. He's still right here waiting, to, waiting for us to praise, waiting for us to stand still while we go into panic mode, stress mode. He's just saying, will you just calm down? Will you just take a chill pill and take a deep breath and say, thank you, Jesus. I'm waiting for you. I'm right here. I'm waiting for you. Why are you stressing? I'm right here waiting for you to come into my presence. I'm waiting to give you peace of mind. Why are you running around like a chicken with your head cut off trying to do it yourself? I'm right here. Have no fear. Stand still. Take a beat. Come on. Come on. Boom. Stop. 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 Stop moving. Stop. Stand still. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The struggles you see today, you will see no more. The struggles you see today, you will see no more forever. I want everyone right now, picture, picture whatever, picture whatever you're dealing with right now. Picture the struggle, the infirmity, whatever it is you're dealing with right now. Picture it. The struggle you see today, you will see no more forever. 
not just no more. I, I want you to notice the wording. No more forever. So whatever you're dealing with right now, when God gives you victory, you're not going to be dealing with it no more for the rest of your life. Think about that. Whatever you've been dealing with, whatever you've been dealing with oh, for years, when the Lord moves your life, you, you're going to have victory for the rest of your life. Think about that. That's a reason. I should start shouting right now. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Woo, that's a reason to shout right now. I, I, how many want to shout right now? That's a reason to shout right now. Because when you think about all you've been through right now, all your life has been through, and the Lord says, stand still, have no fear. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. The Lord will fight. The Lord will fight. Hold your peace. Hold your peace. Watch God. Just watch God. When we say, but God, we can't do it. But God can. I don't see a way out, but God can. God sees it. I don't know how I'm going to make it. God knows how you're going to make it. He's going to bring you out. That's what we trust. We see it every day. That's why we trust. We cannot do it alone. And I have to, if I have to say it every day, I need us to remember that. We need to remember that every day. We cannot do it alone. We cannot, cannot, all caps, cannot do it alone. That's what we trust. That's why we trust. Amen. Praise that. That's right, woman of God. <laughs> Y'all know I use an old term, running around with it like a chicken with your head cut off. When I was a little boy, when before before we before people went to the grocery stores, my grandmother had a backyard of chickens. Now I'm really dating myself now. I'm really dating myself. But my my grandmother, I go we go over her house, and it was dinner time. And we gonna have we gonna have chicken for dinner. What she would do is go to the backyard, grab the chicken for dinner. Take the cat. Now, she took the chicken and she snapped his neck and the head came off in her hand and then the chicken kept running. I, I was freaking out. I was a little boy. I was about six years old. I said, the chicken is running around in circles, running around in circles with no head. The head is in my grandmother's hand and the chicken is still running. So when you hear me say, why are you running like a chicken with your head cut off? That means we don't see where we're going. God knows exactly where we're going. When we run around in circles, we have no idea. No idea. I mean, Mike, you know what I'm talking about. Like the chicken, you can't even catch it. What's so funny? You can't catch the chicken. He has no head, yet it's almost like he knows where you are. You run all over the place, and that chicken is moving out your way every single move. Like, like the head in his hand is looking at you. <laughs> but that's what we that's what we do. When we let panic come in, stress come in, worry come in, we don't hear the Holy Spirit. And when we don't hear the Holy Spirit, we're running around like a chicken with a head cut off. We have no idea where we're going. We have no idea where God's trying to take us. We don't even know that God's trying to bless us because we're too busy panicking. That's why I say every day, have no fear. Stop worrying. Stand still. Stop fear. Stand still. Stress. Stand still. If you feel any of these emotions, that means you need to stand still. Stress, worry, fear, negativity. That means you need to stand still. Stand still. If you feel anything I just mentioned, anything that's not of God, that's mentioned in Philippians 4, 8, stand still. That, that's how you know. If you ever wonder, when, how do I know when to stand still? If you don't feel peace of love, the peace of the Lord, and you feel something in this world tugging at you, stand still. I'm, I'm kind of stressed today. Stand still. I'm worried about this. Stand still. I don't know how I'm going to make it. Stand still. Stand still, as I said before a few weeks ago, stand still is the answer to every negative thought that comes in your mind. Don't fight it. Stand still. Capture the thought. Rebuke it. Bind it. Cast it out. And just love the Lord. Praise God. Thank you for the victory. I say it every day. I want to remind you. I need to remind you every day. I need to remind you every day because we go through this attack. We, our mind is attacked every day. Let me say that again. Our mind is attacked every day. Not just every Sunday, every day. You don't wait till Sunday to, 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 to don't wait till Sunday. You need protection right now. You need peace right now, not Sunday. You need peace every day. We sing it every day. I need peace. I'm at peace with my Lord. I'm at peace because every day the devil's trying to do something to steal our joy. The devil's always trying to knock that smile off our face. We keep praising God. The devil, the, why are you smiling? You praising God. Why are you smiling? You praising God. Hey, hey. I praise God because I love the Lord. So get deep behind me, Satan. Get deep behind me, Satan. So we wake up in praise. That's why we spend 45 minutes to an hour every day in praise. Just to slap the devil who tried to steal our praise today.
And once you get that praise in, once you get the praise on, the devil got to get gone. You got my, you remember my new, my new T-shirt. The devil got to go. Bb, boom. The devil got to go. Resist the devil, and he will flee. I want you to picture that every time you slap the devil. I want you, I want you to picture that T-shirt. Bb, the devil's running. Cause when you praise him, he's running. When you're praying, he's running. When you say thank you, Jesus, he's running. When you use your authority, he's running. We want to keep the devil running. I, I don't want the devil to take camp in my house. I don't want the devil to make a camp in my family. No, we praising God. The devil got to get gone. The devil got to get gone. You start praising, he got to go. Worship, he got to go. Praying, he got to go. Stand still, got to go. Beep, beep, boom, in your face. <laughs> All right, now. All right. <sighs> Calm down, getting happy already. <laughs> All right. Today's topic is a very serious topic because I did, I for OG1s, the OG1s will remember this topic. But if you remember, remember OG ones, the first year, I'm just telling OG two, threes, and fours, our first year, the devil tried so hard to interrupt this fellowship every day we met. The, 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 the connection was always going crazy all kinds of ways. And, and I did a lesson called Unfulfilled Expectations. But because the, the, I, I was on, on the way to work and we spent most of the time trying to get connected, so the lesson ended up being only like 10 minutes long because I was determined to get the lesson out, but I didn't get to give it the full force and full attention it needed. So I brought the topic back and the Ajana, the full title is Disappointment, Unfulfilled Expectations. Disappointment, Unfulfilled Expectations. That's the whole title. I didn't have enough room to put it on the title uh, on the video, I have to put that title later in archives, but the entire title is Disappointment, Unfulfilled Expectations. Now, I, I check out, it's a lot to say. I'm going to have a lot of scriptures to share with you under the video, but I'm going to try to give, I'm going to try to hit the major points in this lesson. Now, the, the definition, the definition of disappointment, to be disappointed is to be discouraged, or sad because of an unmet expectation regarding someone or something. To be discouraged or sad because of an unmet expectation regarding a person or thing. Now, that's a definition officially. Now, in our life, that means if you ever had something or someone disappoint you, that you're expecting something out of them, whether it's a relationship, a work relationship, a church relationship, family, it could be anything, uh, any person or thing where you were expecting one thing and you got completely something different. You got something completely different and it let you down. It let you down because you were expecting different. You were expecting something better. You were expecting them to act completely different and the way they behaved, it shocked you. And not only did it shock you, it rocked you. It brought you, it, it completely took your joy it brought your spirits down because you were looking so forward to this thing or this person. And all of a sudden, they just they just yanked your joy. They just took it, they took your joy. They took your peace. They, all of a sudden you just shook to the core. And and sometimes, sometimes it's taking years for people. If this kind of disappointment happens as a kid, sometimes you're dealing with that disappointment your entire life, trying to forget it. And when we always say old things passed away, is not denying it happened. I want to make sure, I want to make sure, I want to make sure we understand. When we say old things passed away, we're not denying it happened. Now, we don't deny it happened because it happened. And because it happened, it made us who we are right now. See, a part of everything we've been through, the, the definition, we are the sum total of our experiences in life. The sum total, good or bad, who we are right now, who we are right now is a sum total of everything we've gone through, good or bad. Now, when we say old things passed away, we're trying to keep the things in the past from coming to life in our now. And now judging how we look at the world now is old. That's how we look at things then. Now, it happened and we have to put it in a place where we let it go so it doesn't come to life in the now. And it it puts a it puts a, a blinder on how we see the world now. But we don't live the way now. We we made it through the past. 
He saved us. We just sang it. He saved us from all that hurt and the pain. He saved us so we can live again. So we don't need to relive it. We don't need to bring it back to life because we remember it. See, you don't, you don't have to ever be remembered. We don't ever have to remember what happened back then because it's right here. It's locked up right here. What we have to do is control how it affects us now. We got to learn how to control and keep it locked up. We don't want to bring the fear of the past into now, the hurt in the past into now. It happened. We were hurt. Our world rocked. Our world was shaken. And, and now we're trying, to, we're trying to hold our peace. And the only way to hold our peace is to put it in a place and just pray. Because sometimes, sometimes the wounds go so deep, it's hard to hold your peace. It's hard to let go. And you fight it every single day. And sometimes you have to do that. Lord, help me. Help me be strong, Lord. Help me put that thing in the right place, Lord. I need you right now, Lord. See, always, always pray. When you have trouble forgetting something, you have trouble putting that thing in the past and keeping it there. If you have trouble, pray. God is right here. There's nothing wrong. Don't look down. You're not a failure if you if today you went into retroactive mode and and you're you you're thinking about things yesterday. You don't don't condemn yourself. We're flesh. When you can't get things out of your head that you know need to be out of your head, pray. Let me say that again. When you can't get out of your head the things you know need to be out of your head, pray. You can't get out of your head by yourself. God is the only one who can get it out of your head and can put it back in place to hold your peace. That's why in everything give thanks, we pray without ceasing. Whenever that thing comes to your mind, try to steal your joy. What do we do? Rebuke it. Bind it. Let it go. Rebuke it. Don't receive it. Don't receive the negativity. See, the only control we have, we don't, we can't deny it happened. It happened. But when it tries to sneak up on you, you rem remember what happened yesterday. Remember what happened 10 years ago. Remember what happened when you, you were a kid. Remember, remember, remember. Get you behind me, Satan. I rebuke that thought right now. I rebuke that thought because every time I have that thought, I have a terrible day. Every time I have that thought, I'm depressed. So you know it's coming. You know this word. You know this is your best friend. This person used to talk in your ear all day long in your past. Telling you what you couldn't do, what you couldn't be, what you'll never be. You'll never make it. You're nothing. You're this. You th 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 this old thing right here. I'm not bringing this life. You're not. You're not coming in my day. You are not coming into my day. So I rebuke you right now. I rebuke you. I bind you. Cast you out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for that victory. Oh, Lord, I almost got depressed. Thank you, Jesus, for victory over depression. Oh, I almost got lonely. Thank you, Jesus, for the victory over loneliness. See, every time, every time you... Every time you don't let it take you over, you 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 gotta you gotta recognize your victory. Every time that thought tried to bring you back to life into yesterday, and you almost went back into re reliving, you almost went back to reliving yesterday. And if you relive it, you feel it now. Let me say that again. If you relive it, you bring it back to life today. It happened 30, 40. 50 years ago and you if you relive it you bring it back to life and now you feel today exactly like you did 40 years ago because your mind your mind doesn't forget anything the subconscious mind does not forget anything that ever happened to you in your entire life let me say it again the subconscious mind remembers everything you've ever gone through your entire life and if you think about it consciously you bring it back to life. It's like going. It's like going into your mind. Your mind, your subconscious mind, is like a gigantic library of everything you've ever gone through, and it's locked up in the library. But you want to think about it. I, I want to remember. You know what? I remember when I remember when that person hurt me. Let me go back into the library. I want to find that book where that where I was devastated. So you go, you you open your mind. You go back back into your library. I, I'm looking for the book. I'm looking for that book where I was, my heart was ripped apart of uh, 50 years ago. Oh, I want to read that book again. Why am I reading? Why am I reading the book that's gonna make me depressed when I put the book in the library to lock away so I don't I don't need to see that book anymore? I know what the book's about. I've been through the book. I don't need to remember what I went through when my heart was torn apart, when my heart was ripped apart, when somebody stabbed me in the back, when somebody knocked me on my feet, blindsided me. I don't need to read it again. I remember it. And I put it in the library and locked it up for it to stay there. So this whole lesson today 
is helping us recognize that sometimes disappointment and there's several scriptures I'll be sharing several several scriptures that we hold on to to help us understand and it's almost the same scriptures we use for for broken heartedness same scriptures we use for for loneliness grief because God is with us to help us overcome these disappointments these thoughts but God God knows what we're going through on this earth he knows everything we've gone through on this earth and that's why he's given us the authority to rebuke everything that's not like him on this earth hurt past pains neglect all the things in our past that could that could steal our joy we have the power to rebuke it bind it and cast it out of our mind in the name of Jesus and they got to, the devil got to go the thoughts got to go negativity's got to go every knee shall bow the spirit of loneliness spirit of spirit of negativity spirit of worry spirit of fear spirit of depression spirit of suicidal thoughts however you feel is the name of that spirit if you're depressed it's a spirit of depression if you're lonely spirit of loneliness if you if you just can't get you can't be positive spirit of negativity see each spirit has a name of how it makes you feel. And if you don't know what his name, just say, I cast that thought out, named unnamed, seen or unseen. Now I'm talking to everybody. I'm talking to all of you right now. If I say, I'm talking to every demonic spirit, seen or unseen, named or unnamed. Now everybody's got to go. I'm talking to all of you. I'm talking to all of you guys. You all got to go out of my mind, out of my spirit, out of my home, out of my family, in the name of Jesus. I want you all to get gone, including the devil, in your face. Thank you, Lord. And go back to praising. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the victory, Lord. Thank you for the victory today. So you got to thank the Lord for the victory every day. Thank the Lord for the victory, for making it through every day. If you made it through each day, we wake up, like I said before, whether you go to work uh, or not, you, when you wake up every day and you have the joy of the Lord in your heart, you want to make sure you go to bed with the joy of the Lord in your heart. So when you get to bed, it's bedtime. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You got to do it with every, Mike, Mike. You got to do that with every spirit. Every spirit. Doesn't matter what the spirit is. We got to do this with every spirit because that's what prayer without ceasing is. Somebody says, how long do you pray to get rid of a spirit? You pray until it leaves. See, that's what that's what fasting and praying is all about. Sometimes, like Jesus told the disciples, you know, some spirits, some spirits will not go except by fasting and prayer. The, the, Jesus told the disciples that that not every spirit will move in, in just the name of Jesus. But when you fast and pray, and and when you fast and pray, and now you now like remember when we fasted all thirty days in January and we all felt closer. Now the the, the spirits that did not want to leave, some spirits. In the name of Jesus, I command you to leave. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, yeah? Well, now it's time to fast and pray. And now my spiritual power increases. And now you got to go. Because now, in fasting and praying, my spirit is 10 times stronger. Because I've been fasting and praying for 10 days, 20 days, 30 days, 40 days, Lent, whatever it is. When you've been fasting and praying, your spiritual, your spiritual side, your spirit man is now strong enough to command that thing to go right now. Because now you got the power of the name of Jesus all in you because you've been dedicating your your the way you eat the way you pray you've been praying 10 times longer because you've been saturating yourself in things of God and now those stubborn those stubborn spirits that Jesus talks about some spirits will only leave by fasting and praying those are the ones we're talking about right now and disappointment sometimes can fall in that category because the reason disappointment is hard especially if you keep running into the people who disappointed you. Let me say it again. Sometimes the reason the disappointment is hard is because you keep running into the same people. And, and there, was a, there was a visual, uh, well, let me tell you, there are two things. There was a, the, a, 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 the, the famous poet, uh, the late Maya Angelou, she had this quote that Sister John has shared with me. When someone shows you who they are the first time, believe them. Let me say it again. When someone shows you who they are the first time, believe them. They're not fake. See, sometimes you wonder the person did something and you go, I wonder, I wonder where they came from. And then you ignore it. No, no, don't forget it. If somebody slips in your presence and shows a behavior that makes you go, what was that about? And then you and then they go back and then they go back to normal. They go back to the cover. They put the cover back on. And they're hiding something. But for a split second, something they did or something they said made you go, what was that about? 
you just saw something. For a split second, you saw who they really are. You saw who they really are. And they're trying to hide that. And see, when you see it, and this is what they're saying, when someone shows you who they are the first time, believe it. Don't deny it. Well, I wonder what it was. It was probably nothing. Never say that. When you see something that, that bothers you, don't ever, don't ever say, wow, what was that about? Oh, it's probably nothing. It's probably nothing. Don't ever say probably nothing. Amen, John. You just saw a red flag and you just said, it's probably nothing. No, no. If you don't catch it now, it's going to be a mountain later. You got to catch that thing as soon as you see it. And even ask the person, uh, you just you just said this. Uh, you just did that. What was that about? You got you got you call you got to call that thing out as soon as you see it, because if you say oh, it'll work itself out, or oh, I, I, it's nothing, it's nothing. Never say it's nothing, because it is something. You just saw it, and when you call it out, Amen, Jonna. When you call it out, you bring it out at a time where it's very small, because you just saw it. But if you say oh, it's nothing, it's nothing, and now later on, it's bigger. Is bigger, is bigger, and now the same the same trait now is the size of a mountain. Now this, now this happens in relationships. This happens in business relationships. This happens in friendships. This happens in every area of life. We have to keep our spirit of discernment turned on with other people to make sure they're actually who they say they are. A lot of people can put a front. Remember, there was an old song. Remember, there's an old song by the Temptations. Smiling faces, smiling faces tell lies. Smiling faces, smiling faces tell lies. The truth is in the eyes because the eyes don't lie. Let me say that again. The truth is in the eyes because the eyes don't lie. But a lot of times we don't like to look at people in the eye. We do not like to look at people in the eye. So sometimes if you look them in the eye, you see exactly who they are. But a lot of times we, we've grown accustomed to talking to people like this. We talk like this. We look at them a split second. But when you're talking to somebody like this, I'm looking dead at the camera right now. I'm looking dead at you. I'm talking to you. I'm waiting for you to say something back. I'm looking dead at you. You talking to me? I'm looking dead at you. Now, if you're not telling the truth, I'm going to see it in your eyes because the eyes have a very slight, a slight difference changes when someone's not telling the truth. When someone's hiding, they don't want to look at you in the eye. Now, you're trying to look them in the eye. But if someone... If someone is trying to hide something, they cannot look you in the eye because they know they're hiding something. They know they're being fake. But see, they, they, they count on us looking the other way. And then when we keep looking the other way, they now have control over us. Let me say that again. When we keep looking away, they have control over us. But when we look at them dead in the eye, we have control over them. Who's, who is the one that looks away is the one that gives away the power. Let me say that again. The one who looks away is the one who gives away the power. Because if you look away, you just, you just show something. I, 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 I'm not strong enough or I, I'm hiding something. Uh, I, can't, I can't look you in the eye because I'm not, I can't look you in the eye. Now, now what, if you have, what if you have two people both staring dead in each other's eyes? That's going to be more truth right there. If both people look dead in each other's eyes, now they know who each other is. Because you feel energy. When you look at somebody dead in the eyes, you feel their energy. They feel your energy. And they know you're serious about what you're saying. And you know they're serious about what they're saying. And now you know the truth of each other. But when one person cannot look the other in the eye, that's a red flag. Why can't you look me in the eye? Are you lying? Are you lying? Are you lying? Is that why you can't look me in the eye? And so now, now the other part of this, unfulfilled expectations. Let's look at um, Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28. Alfred, welcome, Alfred. Romans 8.28. We know this as well. All things work together for good for those who love the Lord. All things work together. Now, the reason I bring this scripture up, the Holy Spirit gave it to me, when we're, when we're dealing with unfulfilled expectations, we have to remember that all things are working together for the good. Now, God's going to make sure that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. Now, if we are not letting God and trusting God 
He's going to make sure that whatever bad happened to you, whatever good happened to you, all things work together for good. God's going to make sure that whatever happened to you in the past is going to be turned around for your good whenever you overcome it. So he's not going to keep you in the bad side. He's going to take that bad thing, turn around and make it good for you. Now, the perfect example, of, I, Lord, the Lord, I, the Lord gave me an example last night. I had completely forgotten about. Matter of fact, I never even realized it. When I first got here as a young actor and producer, I, I had I had a friend who wanted was looking for a movie to produce. I had a script. Long story short, I put together the script. I got a cast. I got the entire crew together. I was so excited. I got the entire crew together. I'm, I'm, I'm new to California. I got a film, my first film. I had a major studio. The lady worked in a major studio. And man, I was so excited. Wow, wow, I'm about to produce my first film. And then all of a sudden, it ended up being a scam. Now, I had to call 80 people. I put together a crew of 80 people, cast, crew, everybody even had a start date and what happened was it was a double scam the lady who told me she would produce my film her boss scammed her he he was he was a big producer he told her if you bring me a project if you bring me a project i'll make sure you produce it for you i'll produce it for you and it'll be your first at first film as producer well he didn't think she was gonna do it he was just joking so his joke for her devastated me because I was the project she found. So not only was he saying, well, I was just kidding. I didn't know you were going to do it for real. So this lady went all out to get my film produced. She was devastated. I had to call 80 people to tell them this thing wasn't going to really happen. And I mean, I was like, I was like, oh well, man, I was like shaking. I mean, I didn't know what happened. I was literally, I was literally in shock because all of a sudden I went from like, I thought I had my first film, all this stuff done, and I was like, I was almost winning the depression. Now, now get this, all things work together for good. Guess who I met? Guess who I met on that project? Sister Jana. You see what's happening? The only thing that came out of that project is my wife of 26 years, going on 27. Now, the Holy Spirit, I didn't even realize it. When I was when I was putting this, I was putting this together last night, and I was saying, man, the most devastating thing that happened to me was this film, blah 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 blah. And I said, you know what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jana was supposed to be my public relations person. That's how we met. We met in that disaster. So in the middle of the disaster, God had a hidden nugget a hidden nugget in the mess that I had to go through. The one thing that came out of it was my relationship, acquaintance first, which turned into relationship, which turned into marriage for 27 years going on this May. So all of a sudden I understood, hey Jay-Z, now I understood all things work together for good. As much as that was devastating, God had a golden nugget in the middle of the storm. And, and sometimes I want to I want to share this with you because when you look at your life, sometimes if you look back at your worst experiences, if you look back at the things that devastated your life, really, they really rocked your world. If you look at it closely, ask yourself, what came out of that? That actually was a, was God blessing me in the middle of that storm. God still blessed me. It's like, wow. Wow. God, God bless me more than just a movie. He gave me a soulmate who I've been married to ever since. And I was so focused on the devastation, I didn't even see the blessing. And this, this didn't hit me till last night. I suddenly didn't realize, wait a minute. We met in the middle of the worst disaster emotionally for me and one of my lifetime memories of that thing. I said, wow, wow. So, so, so. If, if, if it, it doesn't have to be something like a movie, but if anything in your life, if anything in your life has rocked your world and the fact that you're still here, what I'm trying to get at is no matter what happened emotionally, physically, in your past, if you are still here today, that's a golden nugget right there. See, so many people don't realize 
when you make it through a storm in your life, you make it through hard times. We sing it every day. You save me from all the hurt and pain. We go back in time and remember your most emotional break, your emotional breakdown you had for whatever reason. When you think about that, and and you didn't take your life. Some people, some people get devastated and they immediately commit suicide. Some people get so devastated they just give up and end their life. But you didn't. We're all here because he saved each one of us through that pain, a hurt, or whatever it is in our past. And and see, that was an unfulfilled uh, expectation because when you went through whatever you went through, you didn't expect that. You expected your life to be normal. You expected your life to be happy like other people. You didn't expect this. Wait a minute. This isn't, what's going on? What is this going on in my life? I wasn't expecting this in my life. I wasn't expecting this in family. I wasn't expecting this in church. I wasn't expecting this in marriage. In really, I wasn't, expect, I wasn't expecting this. Those are unfulfilled expectations. Those are unfulfilled expectations. You're not expecting the behavior or the experience that you went through. You're expecting something completely different. And when it didn't happen, it's an unfulfilled expectation. You were expecting something different. And what actually happened was the complete opposite. And the complete opposite rocked your world. It rocked your world to the core. To sometimes you have trouble forgetting it. And that's what we keep saying. Let it go. Lock that thing up. Take that book. Take that book. Close it. Lock it up in the library. Lock up. Lock up. Lock the key. Put the key in. Two, locked up. I, I, it happened. I wrote the book. I put the book away on the shelf. It's done. I'm done with that book. I'm not going to read it again. I don't need to read it again. It's right here. So now I'm I'm in control. I'm in control of my now. I'm in control of my now. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. We have to live that. We have to live that. Because if you don't live it, you don't survive. If you don't keep the old things that have passed away, if you don't keep them under control, under your foot, that is when you go. Amen, John. You say, "Why me?" Yeah. When you when you feel helpless, and you're, you're you're the you're the target of the unfulfilled expectations. You're not the target. You're the receiver. I should say. You are the receiver of the fulfillment is unfulfilled, and now you're the one let down because they they the person or the thing in your life didn't happen, and you're the one who feels the repercussions of it. Now, that's the disappointment. You're disappointed. You're disappointed because the person let you down, the event let you down, relationship let you down, friendship let you down, whatever it is. When something lets you down, it didn't meet your expectations. It is an unfulfilled expectation. It disappoints you. And, and sometimes people get depressed. You get sad. It affects you because you were not expecting it. What you were expecting should have brought you joy. Instead, what you got was let down. And when you got let down, it hits you. It hits you deep, deep and emotionally. Emotionally, it, in some cases, it rips you apart. It causes stress. It causes all kinds of anxiety. And you gotta, you gotta fight hard to hold your peace. And you pray, again, this is when you pray. Amen, John. Uh, that's what, like, like what you said earlier. When you say, why me? Why me? Now we're looking at the world. This is a very delicate situation. When you say why me, it's beyond our understanding. This is where trust comes in. Because remember, when we don't understand what's going on, we got to trust God. God didn't leave us. Remember in the, in the very beginning, I said, if you're in a storm, if you're in a storm and you can't see anything, all you, I think it's really funny. Did you notice today? Today we're in the fog. The in the day we start the lesson, we're in the fog. And the whole lesson is about if your life is in the fog, don't give up on God. Hold on to him. I think it's I just I just just hit me. This the whole day, the day is still foggy right now where I am. And our life can be foggy. And we don't know what's happening. What's going on in my life? I don't understand, Lord. I don't understand. And when you don't understand, the devil comes in with, I know you don't understand because God let you down. I know you don't understand because you, your prayer's not working. I know you don't understand because you you're not going to get your prayers. You're not going to get this. No, no, no. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. 
Like, amen, Sophia, you hold on tighter. When, you, when you're about to lose something, think about it. When you hold on to something in your hand, and it's about to slip out of your hand, what do you do? You squeeze tighter. You don't open your hand and let it drop. When something is valuable to you, when something is very valuable to you, you squeeze tighter to not let it go. So we got we to gotta protect our joy. When something tries to steal your joy, don't let it go. Hold on to it. Feed your joy. Praise your way through it. That's why, it's, that's why we say praise your way through the hardship, the depression, the worry, the fear. Praise your way through. Praise your way to the victory over whatever you're going through. We live by that phrase. That's what the phrase for the, for the ministry. Praise your way through. Praise your way to a victory over whatever you're going through. That's what's so important because if you don't, it steals your joy of fulfillment. Now, Jeremiah 29, 11, Jeremiah 29, 11, we know that we, God knows the plans he has for us. He knows the plans. We don't know the plans. Jeremiah 29, 11, we know that, well, God knows the plans he has for us. We don't know the plans. That's why we have to trust him. See, the main problem being human form is we don't know what God knows. We know that God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. I say this all the time. When we don't understand God, when we don't understand God, we did lesson last week. You got to trust because we have no idea why what's happening is happening. We have no idea where he's taking us. We have no idea how you're going to make it. All you got left is trust. All you got left is trust. That's what last week's lesson was about. When all you can do is stand. When all you, when you've done the best you can, what next? I've, I've done my exercise. I take my medicine. I'm, I'm praying every day. I don't know. I don't know. What's left? Stand. Stand and trust the Lord. Stand still. And trust the Lord. You're in a storm right now. You're in a storm right now. Stand. Trust. Stand. Trust. See, we have to we have to live that. Breathe that. Think about it. Speak it. We have to do that every single day, especially to keep disappointment from turning into depression. Disappointment to stress, disappointment, anxiety. See, disappointment can open the doors to a lot of other negative emotions. The negative family is a big family. The negative family is a big family. If you let one, if you let one negative spirit into your life, they bring the whole family. They open the door. Hey, hey, he's he's disappointed. Hey, fear, hey, fear coming in. A worry coming in. Uh, anxiety, come on in. Uh, depression, suicidal thoughts. Come on in. Hey, guys, he's depressed. Come on in. Everybody comes to the party. Everybody comes to the party. And next thing you know, you feel suicidal. What happened? You let one thing steal your joy, and everybody comes to the party to take you out. Because the devil what? The devil comes to steal, kill, destroy everything in your life. All you need to do is let one thing in. That's why we, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, capture every thought not the good thoughts we want good thoughts happy thoughts we want to capture every thought that is not like god every thought every negative thought worry fear all those are negative thoughts philippians 4 8 talks about meditate on these things philippians 4 8 meditate on these things and if that's not if that thing, things are joy i'm paraphrasing Peace, love, happiness. Meditate on these things. Philippians 4 8. Meditate on these things. Because if you don't, the things of the devil is what you meditate on. And when you meditate on the world, guess what? The world comes with it. Let me say it again. When you meditate on the world, everything in the world comes with it. All the chaos, confusion, violence, blasphemy, everything negative jumps on your life. And all of a sudden, you're in a sea of chaos. Your life feels like it's all out of control. Why? Because you disconnected. Remember my phrase, don't disconnect. It doesn't matter how crazy your life is. It doesn't matter whether chaos, depression, all this stuff is around you. We stay connected. 
regardless of how you feel. It doesn't matter how you feel. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. I'm praising God anyway. I'm being hit right now. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I'm, I'm kind of, I feel my body's being attacked. I feel pain in my body. Oh, I love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I know you're with me. I know I'm going through this struggle right now, but I know you're with me, Lord. I'm going through the pain right now, but I know you're with me, Lord. I'm being blindsided right now. I know you're with me, Lord. See, it doesn't matter. He's with us in everything. And that's what we got to remember. We got to remember that regardless of what we're going through, regardless of what we're going through, we can never let go. We say it every day in prayer, never let go of God's unchanging hand. Never let go. He never left. The reason we're here, he never left us. Think about it. The only reason we're here through all that we've been through, he never left us. So why would he leave us now? If we're here today because of all the stuff he pulls us from, why would God leave us today? That's why it says in the word, he's the same yesterday, today, forevermore. If he saved us back then, he's going to save us right now. He's not going to let you, he's not going to let you go today. Well, you know, that was last year, that was three years ago. I saved you then, but you're on your own today. No, I'm not going to save you today. No, God doesn't do that. The devil will. God doesn't change. The devil, yeah, the devil will give you a thing one day and he'll yank it from the next day. The devil wants to see you depressed. The devil wants to see you in tears. The devil wants to give you one thing one day and yank it from the next day. Just so you can laugh. Look at that. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that person depressed. I gave him one thing and I yanked it away. Look at the depression. Look at the look, suicide thoughts. Oh, look at that. Oh, I got him right where I wanted. He, I, I yanked that stuff. No, 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 no. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. That's what the devil does. But God never leaves us. It doesn't matter where we're attacked. It doesn't matter. See, the devil is all a game. The devil, the devil knows he has no power. We sang it today. The devil got no kind of hold of me because Jesus Christ gave me what? Total victory. If the devil knows he can't, he can't do anything, all he's got left is mind games. He's got to play with a mind. He's got to play with the mind to get us to figure out how he can take our mind off God. But if you keep praying up, praised up stillness feed your faith starve it out feed your spirit starve your flesh if you keep that every day there's nothing the devil could do remember he's seeking he's seeking he's roaming the earth like a lion seeking who he may devour but if you prayed up he can't devour you that's why the devil's seeking he can't devour you if you prayed up that's why he's roaming the earth seeking who he may devour i'm looking for people who are not praying who don't believe who are worried, who are stressed, who gave up on God. That's that's who he's going to devour. But we keep praising. We keep praying. Keep standing still. Have no fear, stand still. Live the word. Live the word. Don't read it. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Every day. And that's the key to our victory. Every day. And that's the key to this message. So when we're dealing with, as I close, unfulfilled expectations, we got to hold on to God's unchanging hand to hold our peace because he's going to pull us through that storm. He's going to pull us through that storm because whenever the devil's trying to pull us back, holding on to his hand is going to pull us forward. Oh, that's another, another, another diagram. Whenever the devil's trying to pull us back, Jesus is pulling us forward. It's a tug of war, but guess what? It's a tug of war. And guess who's going to win? Total victory. <laughs> Who in your face, devil? In your face. It doesn't matter what the took away is. The devil's trying to pull one way, but Jesus is pulling the right way, and his way is the only way because he's always gonna win. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, who never gets weak. He strengthens us. We never get weak. And that's where I close. That's where I close. There's a lot of scriptures for this lesson. So when you see the lesson archives, there's a whole bunch of scriptures for you to meditate on. And the scriptures in this video archives are scriptures to read, to encourage you if you're going through a, a, a emotional reaction to disappointment. These scriptures that I'll be giving you today, along with the one I just gave you, is to read, to, 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 stop, the, to stop disappointment in its tracks, stop negativity in its tracks. Because remember, all the negative family are related. All the negative family are related. So once you stop one, one negative spirit, you apply the same scriptures to all negative spirits. Any negative spirit, 
does not want to face the word of God. Every negative spirit will go when you say resist the devil, he will flee because all the negative spirits are connected to the devil and resist the devil and he will flee along with the entire negative demonic spirits in this world that's trying to attack you and bring you down. That's the power of the living word. That's why we use the authority he's given us to, to trample over every negative spirit, trample over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Praise God. Father God, we thank you, Lord, this lesson today, Lord, as we come together in fellowship today. Thank you so much, Lord, for just helping us to be able to overcome, not just disappointment, but like you, Lord, for helping us overcome whatever we face, Lord. Thank you for giving us the strength, Lord, to let your light shine through us, Lord, to let your light shine through us every day, Lord. Give us right now, Lord, supernatural strength, supernatural strength to walk through every storm, to never let go of your unchanging hand, to never give up, Lord, but to always keep our mind stayed on you, Lord. Bless every fellowship member right now who can hear my voice live or archive and give us that supernatural strength to be able to walk in victory over whatever we face in this life. And know, without a shadow of a doubt, you're with us every step of the way. You give us strength every step of the way. Victory every step of the way. Healing every step of the way. We thank you so much, Lord. We thank you so much right now. In Jesus' name. And right now, before we close, as always, I got to make sure that someone's always listening to our lesson who does not know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So please, no typing now as I go into prayer salvation. I'm talking right now. I'm talking right now before we go. I'm talking to the person who's been listening for the past two hours. Who does not know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm talking to that person who is listening. And all you've been doing the entire lesson, the entire two hours, all you've been doing is crying and, and, and feeling hopeless and feeling like darkness is all over you. You may even feel suicidal, yet somehow you find yourself on this channel and you have no idea how you got here. And that's because God brought you here. God sees the pain and suffering you're going through right now. You're not here by accident. God brought you here. You may be here as a backslider, walking in guilt. Because for whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back into the world of sin. And now the devil's knocking you every which way but loose and telling you, you can never go back to God. Once you fail God, you can never go back. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. None of us are perfect. All have fallen short. So if you've been walking in sin as a backslider and you want to come back to the Lord, just say the prayer of salvation over again. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. So whether you be walking as a backslider or you're just walking in heaven as depression, both of you pray with me. Right? Repeat after me. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without lifting up to you first. Create me, O oh Lord, a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything that is not like you, in Jesus' name. And if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is not right to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of God that will come into your life and show you the people, activities, and things you're doing which is bringing the darkness into your life. And he will also tell you what to do to stop it and to change your life. Find new friends who love the Lord and can show you how to live in this world loving the Lord and not loving the world, which brings all the darkness into your life. Every day, like we said before, every day, feed your spirit, starve your flesh, feed your faith, starve your doubt. Every day, not just every Sunday, every day. And the more you do it, the more time you spend with God, the more peace you'll feel in your life. Amen. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke 
and bind the spirits of retribution, revenge, retaliation, backlash, and every other demonic spirit, named and unnamed, seen and unseen. And we cast you all out of our mind, out of our spirit, out of our family, out of our homes, all back to the pit of hell from which you came. In Jesus' name. And Father God, loose, Lord. Loose into the fellowship. Loose unspeakable joy. Loose peace beyond understanding. Loose restoration, Lord. Restore, restore, restore every area of our life. Loose reconciliation. Heal marriages and families right now falling apart because of the devil's attack, Lord. And Lord, keep a hedge of protection over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart, but who the devil still attacks every day, Lord. Loose supernatural healing, physical healing, emotional healing. Lord, let your blessings touch them right now, Lord. Touch them right now. And the, your blessings of healing cover them right now. Head to foot, the blood of Jesus flowing through the blood vessels right now, healing every diseased and diseased cell in our body, Lord. And we claim it every day, Lord. I believe I've received my healing in Jesus' name. I believe I've received my healing in Jesus' name. Speak it every day. See it every day. Live it. Push. Pray until something happens every day. Lord, loose supernatural overflow, financial breakthrough, supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, let your blessings of abundance rain down, Lord. Rain down on the fellowship right now for whatever financial need, large or small. For you shall supply all our need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want for anything for the Lord is my shepherd. And finally, Lord, finally we thank you for our miracle, Lord. Each fellowship member has a miracle they've been praying for for so long, Lord. And we now know as a fellowship, we now learn every day, spend time in your miracle. See your miracle every day. See it. Believe it. Receive it. Expect it. And once you expect it, start walking in even before it's here. It's already done. It's already done in the spirit. We don't know the when. We will never know the when. But because we don't know when, that means any day we wake up, any day we wake up could be the day of the manifestation of the miracle we've been praying for. The law of expectancy, Lord. We expect our miracle every day. So all these things we ask, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let the fellowship say, Amen. Amen. Amen.